Anytime you open UiPath Studio, you will land on the Start tab and this is divided into two panes. On the left pane, you have the options to open an existing project and the right pane has options to create a new project. Here you can create a new project either from scratch or use one of these templates. Similarly, there are two options to open an existing project. You can either open it from any of the folders in your computer or from any of these source control repositories. And those are the options you find on this team tab. So essentially, this clone or checkout option is just a shortcut to the team tab. On the top, you will see the studio profile and the edition. By default, when you install the community edition, you get Studio Pro. And that is why you see the option for creating a test automation project and a template for mobile testing project. We don't really need this, so we can switch it to the regular Studio profile, which I'll show you how to do it in a minute. Next, the Templates tab will show all the available templates. The Tools tab will give you the options to install the extensions required for various applications. In the last video, I mentioned that you need to install the UiPath extension for Chrome, Edge, and Firefox for browser automation. This is where you install it. Similarly, if you want to automate a Java or Silverlight application, or if you have applications running on Citrix, VMware Horizon, or Remote Desktop, you need to install the appropriate runtime plugins. We'll be using Google Chrome extensively in this course, so let's go ahead and install that. Now we get this prompt, if you want to continue installing the UiPath extension for Chrome, please close all your Chrome processes, then click OK. So I'll close Google Chrome and click OK. And now it says the UiPath extension for Chrome was successfully installed and I need to enable that on Chrome and restart the browser once again. So let's do that. I'll open Chrome. And it should automatically pop up saying UiPath Web Automation Extension is added and if I want to enable it. So I'll click Enable Extension. Then I'll close Chrome and launch it again. Now if I click on this icon here, I can see the UiPath Web Automation. Now just in case if you don't get that pop-up, don't worry, just type chrome colon slash slash extensions on this address bar and here you should see UiPath web automation so just turn it on using the switch. Next if we go to the settings tab you see various options to configure your studio based on your requirement. I'm not going to go through every single option right now most of them are self-explanatory and we will discuss some of these options during various stages of this course anyway. But now I just want to show you some of the most essential and useful ones. Here on the general tab, you can select the language and you can change the theme to a dark theme if you like, as it is a little easy on your eyes. A lot of developers love this feature because it is available with many other IDEs like Visual Studio. But I prefer the light theme, especially as we are going to work with process flows. Then if you go to the tab license and profile, you see the options to change the license and the profile. You cannot change the license now because it is licensed from the orchestrator directly. Later I'll show you how to install a standalone license without the orchestrator. Finally, if you want to change the studio profile, you can click view or change profile and you can choose the profile you want. Throughout this course, we'll be using the regular studio, although you may choose to leave it as Studio Pro. So I'll select UiPath Studio Community and it says profile has changed, do you want to restart now? I'll click yes and it'll take a minute to reload. Again, you get the options to watch tutorials. I'll select don't show again and click close. On the top it says UiPath Studio Community and you can see that the test automation project and the templates are gone. Finally, we have the help tab where you can get help and tutorials through various channels like the product documentation, community forum, help center, and so on. All right, now let's go ahead and create a simple automation project. I'll do that by clicking this process option under new project, and it prompts me to enter name, location, and description. I'll give the name as my first process, and I'll leave the location and description as default and click Create.
Now our project is set up successfully. Here you have four main sections. The ribbon menu on the top, the designer panel in the center which is where we will design our workflows and several panels like project, activities, snippets, properties, outline, output and so on. We will go through these various panels as we progress through this course. In order to create our workflow, click open main workflow and we are on the main workflow tab. A workflow is made up of a sequence of activities. So if we go to the activities panel, you can see several activities arranged in groups. For example, if you want to work with an Excel file, expand app integration, and you will see CSV, Excel, and mail. And if I expand Excel, you can see several activities like read cell, write cell, and so on. You can also search these activities by typing here. For example, if I type read cell, you can see the activities here. All right, so for our first exercise, we are going to create a workflow which will open Notepad and type some text. So the first step is to open Notepad. In order to open any application, you need to use the activity open application. I'll drag and drop that into the designer panel. Now here you can see this blue exclamation mark which is a warning because you haven't specified what application it should launch and that's why if I hover over the exclamation mark it says both file name and arguments are null. You should pass at least one of them. And if I click on the open application activity on the right hand side you can see that there are two fields arguments and file name. The file name is where you specify the path to the application but you don't have to really type that in. There's a much easier shortcut. You can simply use this indicate window on screen option to indicate the application, in our case, Notepad. So I'll first open Notepad. And let me move this to the right a little bit. Then click indicate window on screen. And if I move my mouse over Notepad, you can see it gets highlighted. So I'll simply click on it and the application is successfully captured. You can see the file name field is automatically populated as well. You can also see that UiPath has taken an informative screenshot which is very useful. Now that we have open Notepad, we want to type some text into it. All further activities related to this Notepad should be within this do sequence. So in the activities pane, I'll search for type, and you can see various activities that have the word type in it. We want this activity which says type into under keyboard. And if I point my mouse over it, it says sends keystrokes to a UI element. So I'll drag and drop this into the do sequence. And it says indicate element inside window. I don't have to do that because we already indicated that when we open the application and this type into activity is residing within that open application container. In other words, it is within the same scope. We are getting this blue exclamation warning because we need to specify the text that we wanted to type into the notepad. So I'll type within double quotes, this is my first automation project. And if I click somewhere outside this activity, you can see that the warning has disappeared. All right, now let's run it and see if it works. I'll close the notepad window and I'll click on this blue debug button on the top, which looks like a play button. There you go. So you have successfully created your first automation project. Congratulations. See you in the next video.